Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to the next in the series of the Deep Crawl webinars. My name is John Mice, Chief Growth Officer at Deep Crawl, and today we're going to get really into a nice subject around SEO monitoring, and I'll come on to explain a little bit about that. But first of all, I'd like to welcome our speaker today, Mr. John Doherty, who is the founder and CEO of Credo. John, thanks very much for taking the time and getting out about so early in the Denver area to, to be here with us today. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. I'm super stoked to do this. No, I'm really happy to have you here, sir. So, I mean, a little bit about John. John has obviously been in the industry for a good few years now, working within the SEO space and has covered many areas across the digital marketing space with different companies, such as email, content, PR. And five years ago, you know, launched his own business, Credo. And I'll, I won't steal John's thunder. I'll let John explain a little bit about Credo to you within the presentation. But I think it's key to say that, you know, the topic today is incredibly pertinent. I mean, having been in the SEO space myself for a long time, the market is just keeps growing. It's getting bigger. It's getting more complex. We're seeing more and more money spent within the SEO space. You know, in some respects, you could kind of say that it's grown up. Um, and really what's really interesting to see for me over the last sort of four to five years is CMOs within large organizations are really starting to treat SEO as something that is incredibly serious to the to their marketplace and their success is marketing within their digital marketing mix. And, and John's going to take us through, obviously, what we can do about that and learn how we can actually monitor better as well as execute within our best SEO practices. So it's going to be the usual format as you guys who've tuned in before and listened to me um, and the other speakers that we've had in the past go. John's going to present for 30 to 35 minutes um, and then we'll get into the Q&A as well. We love the questions. You know, please do submit the questions in the normal way via the chat box. Uh, that's within the go-to webinar. Um, and also, you know, it's key for us to, you know, like I always say, we really, really do appreciate your feedback. You know, there will be a survey at the end of the, at the webinar when you guys go to click out. It's incredibly important for us to get that feedback to see how we can make this better or suggest to some speakers or, you know, think about the format a little bit for us. But uh, it seems to work. We seem to get great attendees ongoing and today's another great attendee. I'm watching the, the numbers tick up as I'm speaking. Um, and as I say as well, there'll also be the recap in the morning as normal. We, we're going to record this. We're going to push the slides out. And there'll be a blog post as well covering all of the pertinent points from the Deep Core marketing team. Um, and that should be out by around about midday tomorrow. So if you guys are looking out for the content and you're live with us now, you obviously get it pretty quickly because we're doing it for you as we speak. Um, if not, and you have signed up, the, the slides and everything will be there for you by around about midday tomorrow, London time. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to our fantastic speaker, Mr. John Doherty, uh, CEO and founder of Credo, to talk to us today about SEO monitoring for the next 30 to 35 minutes. And then please do submit those questions. And uh, I look forward to the Q&A with you after your fantastic presentation, John. Over to you, sir. And thank you again. Awesome. Thank you, John. It is uh, it is great to be here. I'm trying to make sure. Are you all seeing? Uh, hang on. Let me make sure I'm sharing the correct screen with you. Um, all right. So it looks like I am now finally sharing the correct screen with you. So uh, I appreciate the intro, John. And um, I am super, super stoked to be here. I'm a big fan of deep crawl and a big fan of uh, of SEO and monitoring. And so when uh, when Jennifer asked me if I'd be willing to do this, I was super excited to agree to it and probably agreed a little bit too fast. Um, because I was so excited. So uh, basically, um, as John said, I'm John Doherty. I'm the founder of a company called Credo, getcredo.com. Um, some people call it Get Credo, but I, I go by the brand name of Credo. I couldn't afford to buy credo.com. turns out a five uh, letter domain.com is very expensive. Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, SEO monitoring, um, the what, the why, and the how, um, why we do this even. Um, so my background is uh, I've worked at a few agencies, um, one in Philly, and then I worked for Distilled in New York City, which uh, their main office is based in London, of course. Um, and then I worked in-house for Zillow for a couple of years, running SEO and growth for a couple of their brands, and then been running Credo uh, full-time for uh, almost three years. It'll be three years here in just about a month. So um, I've worked with a lot of large companies, um, very large websites, seven figures um, of URLs in the index. And, um, and, and basically one thing that I've learned over the years is the importance of monitoring what's going on with your site so that then when you're approached with questions, um, whether it's from your boss, from your VP, from your CMO, um, as John was talking about, you're ready to go and you look good and you can actually get things done. Because the hardest thing, the easy thing about SEO is diagnosing what's going on. The hard thing about SEO is actually getting it done. And as we all know, the execution is where you actually see the results. So, um, so let's jump on into it. Um, I have about 60, I think 70 slides is what uh, PowerPoint is telling me right now. And so it'll probably take about half an hour to 35 minutes and, um, and then we'll be super happy to answer your questions. 
So as John said, uh, the SEO world has changed over the last few years. Um, I don't know how long all of you that are uh, listening in right now have been uh, been a part of the SEO world, but I've been in it for about a decade now, and it has completely, completely changed um, in that in that time. When I started in about 2009, there was a lot of uh, kind of some of the darker arts you could call them going on, link buying, um, that sort of thing, a lot of spam. Uh, about two years into my uh, into my tenure in the SEO world, uh, the Panda algorithm rolled out, and then about a year later, Penguin rolled out, and so everything changed. Uh, you couldn't do uh, kind of mass, you know, mass content, uh, you know, spinning a content to really rank well. Um, you know, you had to cut back on your anchor text uh, when Penguin rolled out, and just everything has changed over the last few years, and especially now, taking into account machine learning and that sort of thing. And then also, the search results are getting more competitive, and, and they're squeezing us out. Um, Clicks are harder to come by, and by they, I mean the search engines. So clicks are harder to come by. Obviously, the search engines make their money with advertising, um, and so if they can improve their their clicks from ad, from uh, from their ads or clicks to their ads, um, while also not hurting the user experience, then they're going to make more money, and users are going to be just as happy and aren't going to use them less. It's definitely a balance, but you can see this is mobile organic click through rate, and this is data um, from JumpShot that uh, Ranfish can put this together. Um, of obviously of formerly of Moz and now of Spark Toro. Um, and this, so this is data study that he did with JumpShot, um, where basically you can see that the mobile organic click through rate has gone down substantially from 2015 to 2018. About 66% of queries getting clicks um, on the regular organic results to now it's about 38.97 uh, uh, is what it was in February of 2018. So, and you can see the paid clicks are paid click percentage and click through rate is going up. So, uh, SEO is getting harder. Um, and also, people out there are trying to steal our budgets. They're trying to steal our SEO budgets. We're already uh, squeezed as it comes to SEO. If you talk to any SEO and ask them, um, you know, what's your SEO budget? There, a lot of them, unfortunately, are like, what do you mean an SEO budget? Like, I don't have budget to spend on SEO. It's like, well, what are what's your company spending on advertising? They're like, oh, we're spending like $80,000 a month huge disparity there um, a budget and then you know we see data like this from shareaholic which is a social sharing um uh, plugin that they were basically claiming that social was driving more visits than search um, this has been disproven but people are this has gotten spread around um so much that you know it's something that we're definitely um faced with as well in the seo world but as john alluded to the industry keeps on growing um, this is a, an article from Search Engine Land, um, uh, basically talking about a study by Borel Associates, which um, they have their recent one out. Um, it is behind a paywall, but uh, it's it's worth reading. Um, and this is a couple of years ago. They basically said the SEO industry is worth $65 billion, and it's kept on growing since then. Um, so it's a huge, huge industry um, out there, a lot of money being spent, and a lot of money to be made. But of course, good SEO is not cheap. Um, this is from a study that I did uh, about a year and a half ago. I think I released it February of 2017, where basically I did a study of how much do marketing agencies and marketing providers charge on average. Um, and on average, an hourly rate for a good uh, consultant or uh, agency is gonna be somewhere in the 120 to 190 uh, an hour range. And minimum projects are in the four figures and often higher than that. Um, I've seen SEO budgets, I've seen retainers for agencies, you know, in the 20, 30, $40,000 a month range for big publicly traded companies. So uh, people will pay good money for it as well. Um, but then of course, SEO is becoming more complex as I've talked about. Um, also where this is a, a screenshot from uh, a Whiteboard Friday that, that Rand Fishkin did, um, again, that there are so many different things that we have to do um, in order to actually rank these days. You can't just throw some keywords on the page and have your keyword in your title tag, your URL, your H1, your H2, and you know write a bunch of content. Um, you still need to do that stuff. The, the basics still matter, but there are a lot of other things going on as well, right? Such as what's the intent? What kind of pages are ranking? Um, you know, where are you getting links from? Uh, you know, can you get rich snippets? Uh, what about user-generated content? There are so many things that go into it, not to even mention machine learning, you know, uh, semantic indexing, that sort of thing. So uh, SEO is becoming much harder. And so we need those budgets that people are trying to steal from us. Um, and then of course, the internet is still exploding in size. Um, social media is huge. Uh, and uh, I mean, you can just see all the, all the data here. Um, and I believe I have, uh, yeah, according to hostingfacts.com, this was a couple years ago, or, yeah, I believe two years ago, 
Uh, over 3 million blog posts are published on the internet every single day. Um, that's a lot of content. I'm sure that's accelerated um, over time. And then when you take into account uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, uh, Snapchat, the mobile only stuff, right? Mobile apps, uh, it's just absolutely exploding um, the amount of data uh, going on out there and the amount of content being created. Uh, so the, the good news is that uh, a lot of SEOs are paid well. This is from uh, Glassdoor, where they say the average SEO manager um, salary is, uh, I believe this is in the US, um, is $82,000 a year, which is which is pretty solid. This is in-house data. Um, and you can see on the right side there, uh, director of SEO is, is up in the six figures usually. SEO specialist is obviously less, but you know it's decent, decent pay there. Um, so there are... Uh, as I've said, there's money to be made there, but we're expected to do a lot of different things. This is a screenshot of an SEO manager job description um, from Workable. It does include a few things like uh, design, uh, you know, PPC, that sort of stuff. So this is more of a director of marketing position, but an SEO manager does a lot of different things. Um, internally, having worked as an SEO manager before, there's a ton in-house, there's a, a lot that goes on around your wrangling content, your wrangling link building, your, um, you know, there, uh, technical SEO, uh, sometimes you work with an agency or a consultant to get things done, and then you're reporting up the chain, um, and then potentially also working with developers, product managers, et cetera, to get it done. Um, so it's a big, it's a big, big job. Um, and uh, when I, before I worked in-house, I wondered what does an in-house SEO actually do? Um, and uh, the answer is that they do a ton of things, and usually it's too big for one person um, to do. So when I worked um, in-house at Zillow, they had, uh, across all the brands, there was basically a, an SEO on each brand um, or multiple SEOs on each brand. Um, and on the big brand, there were uh, three or four SEO managers plus had access to developers, designers, et cetera, and working with product teams. So um, there are, there's often more than one. And so you might have a director of SEO or something like that. Um, SEO can be a really big job. So the question comes down to, how do we keep on top of our growth? Um, here's a, um, a chart from a uh, former client of mine that you know we're growing really really well um, through from the beginning of 2017 through the middle of 2017 you know things are going up um, and looking good but what happens when something goes wrong um, and so this is basically around the time I stopped working with them this happened um, and uh, there, there are a bunch of different things that that happened here but how do we keep on track of this right when you start seeing that graph go down um, you know there are many different questions around what you know what happened here. Um, was it technical? Was it a content-based thing? Um, did Google roll out an algorithm change? Uh, you know, do we get hit by a penalty? Um, this sort of thing is normally a penalty because you see it just a drop straight, but um, and this was not. But um, th the questions just go through our mind, like what happened? And the worst thing in the world is getting an email from your boss or your client, and they're saying what happened here? And you're like, I don't know. I hadn't seen that yet. Um, I hate having to go back um, with that. And so, um, you know, th there's a lot of stuff going on uh, at a big company, right? At uh, whether you're in-house and it's your, it's the company you're working for, it's the company you own, or um, it, it's, it's a client of yours, right? There are a lot of things going on, especially hard when it's a client because there are a lot of things happening that you have no idea about. We were talking with the SEO manager, whoever it is, um, and you know they don't know what you know what are the server teams doing, right? Are they moving over to new servers? Um, you know what's what's happening? What's the PR team doing? All these sorts of things. Um, there's just a lot a lot going on all the time. Um, and it, it could drive you absolutely nuts. Um, so I used to feel uh, frantic about SEO, um, and it's really easy to want to check the dashboards all the time. Um, you know, with questions like, what if something changes in the next 30 minutes, right? Reality is that nothing's going to change in the next 30 minutes. Uh, what if traffic drops and I lose my job? Well, um, you know, that's that's obviously something to worry about. But if you're doing good work, then not really. Um, what if our client gets a penalty and I'm not there to see the notification, right? Um, a lot of uh, agency people ask this sort of thing um, when you want to go take a vacation. Um, and, you know, there, there are other ways to, to deal with that, um, right? It, it, there are just so many different questions that happen here. Um, and today I, I want to try to get us out of that uh, that endless cycle of worrying about what's going to happen um, and or what could happen and actually let us kind of sit back and rest in uh, doing great work and not having to be checking the dashboards um, all the time, right? We want to get a little bit more zen in our, uh, in our focus um, and in our SEO work. So I've experienced some crazy times with SEO. Uh, one time uh, when I was working in New York, I got a call from the senior director of marketing at a large publicly traded international hotel chain. 
And she called me at 8 a.m. and said that they weren't ranking for their main branded term. I was like, oh, geez, what happened? Um, turns out they had migrated um, a bunch of their sites into one. Um, and there were some issues with some redirects and that sort of thing. Um, and they started ranking again a few hours later, but just frantic, frantic, frantic call. Um, and then another one, a uh, publicly traded big B2B brand here in the States um, that pushed a new website live. And once again, I get a phone call saying, we're not ranking for a brand term. I'm like, well, what happened? And well, we pushed a new site live. Um, and what they had done was they pushed the whole staging site live, uh, which was completely no index. All the URLs changed uh, and, there were no, and there were no redirects. So of course they're not gonna be ranking um, anymore. So you know, we fixed that, we rolled the site back and then rolled it out properly the next day. Um, but you know, this is the kind of thing that your anxiety goes through the roof, your heart rate starts pumping. Um, and I wish I had uh, better monitoring at the time set up. These were both back in 2012, 2013. Um, so what does SEO monitoring do and what does it not do? Um, so basically setting up your processes, I'm all about processes um, as a, you know, as a solo entrepreneur or, or working with other people, working with teams, you know, there's a lot of things that have to be done. If we don't have processes set up, um, once again, we're going to go, we're going to go crazy. Um, so setting up our processes gives us consistent reporting to understand what's changing on our site, your site, your client's site. Um, and when an issue becomes a high priority, um, these won't save you from these sorts of fires happening, but they can help you put them out and stay ahead of the curve on things becoming a larger issue. Um, so basically we're trying to get more data, more information, um, and then we can prioritize it within that. So uh, real quick, who I am, I'm the founder of uh, getcreator.com. Um, I've worked as a digital marketing SEO consultant for a number of years as well, 10 years of SEO experience in-house um, and built marketing and growth teams at uh, Zillow here in the USA on a couple of their rentals brands. Um, and I currently live in Denver, Colorado with my wife, Courtney, um, and my dog, uh, Butterbean, who you can see in the photo there. Um, so I've seen about 17, I think it's about 18 million actually now um, in digital marketing work come through Credo since October, 2015. So in the last few years, um, done a lot of consulting myself and I basically work exclusively around Credo and some very large brands um, and websites. So I've been around the block a lot, work with some of the biggest uh, websites on the internet. Um, so I've, I've seen uh, a lot over the last 10 years. So let's get into the meat. So what is, uh, what is SEO monitoring? Um, SEO monitoring is using tools, both free and paid, um, to help you do these things. First, keep track of changes that are made on your site so that you can A, measure their effectiveness to your business, um, which is super important because uh, when we're rolling things out, it's taking time, it's taking effort, it's taking budget, uh, whether it's your business's budget or your client's budget, um, and we're having to pitch for that budget to get to get the time for uh, developers, designers, et cetera, to roll things out. Um, and so we need to know, okay, was this effective or was it not? A, for, for us geeky SEOs that, um, you know, knowing what work, what's working and what's not, right? Because that, that makes us better at our job, but also saying, hey, we rolled this, look, look at this CEO, look at this chief revenue officer, whoever it is, VP, we rolled this thing out. And over the next three months to these pages that we rolled it out on, we saw a 100% increase in traffic and an 80% increase in revenue. And so, you know, that's meaningful to our bottom line, right? We're getting into the business side and not just, oh yeah, we rolled out some new pages to target some keywords. VPs and, you know, uh, CMOs, that sort of thing, don't really care about that unless they come from an SEO background. What they care about is, is the dollars and what does this mean to our business and was this a good investment to make? Um, so measuring the, the effectiveness to your business, but then also when something has gone wrong and when something that changed has negatively affected your site, whether you did it or not, um, whether it was known about or not. Um, we need to keep on, it helps us keep on top of movements across the site made by teams that you are not involved with, um, especially at bigger companies with multiple product teams and you know maybe multiple businesses on the same domain. Um, this, is, this is huge. And then also spotting broader trends of rankings that you can capitalize on to see growth across your company. Uh, some of this comes from just basic competitor monitoring and keyword research, um, but, you can, but if you're tracking keywords, you can also see, okay, what's ranking, what type of pages are ranking for these things. Um, it's actually kind of awesome. Um, and, and I actually really geek out about this stuff. Um, I love this image because it's a uh, it, uh, high five is what I was getting at here. Um, and it's in, uh, I believe it's in the UK. So, um, so SEO monitoring lets you do the following. Uh, basically our goal is by setting up these processes, we can focus on the big efforts instead of manually checking to see if things are okay. Um, we should operate from the understanding, from the assumption that things are okay until we're told that it's not. Um, though obviously, you know, if, uh, can you, you know, check analytics, check dashboards, that sort of thing. Um, you know, you, you should be kind of keeping a prize of this, but I want to know when the major things are going on. Um, we need to know ahead of time when something is becoming an issue um, so that we can stay ahead and then track everything that is happening so that when an issue arises, we can take action more quickly. Um, 
So uh, as I said, you can also keep on top of movements across the site made by teams that you're not involved with. Um, because these can also affect the rankings that you've worked so hard to get. Um, they are, uh, th this happens a lot if you work, um, if you work in house or if you've been working with a client and they come to you and say, this thing happened, you're like, well, you know, what else has changed? You're like, let me go ask my team, um, which is a totally fine, totally fine answer, but we're trying to, you know, stay ahead of the curve. Um, so let's talk about what to, what to monitor within your, uh, within your site and within your SEO to help you stay a bit more sane. Um, first of all, of course, we need to monitor our traffic. We need to monitor uh, traffic from the search engines, from you know Google, yes, from Bing as well. Um, you know, in some B two B industries, especially um, you know with a kind of an older demographic, especially in the states, um, a lot of people are using Bing still. So this is an important one uh, to measure top line traffic, um, but also traffic divided up into specific sections of your site, the sections that matter, um, because this also helps us build better business cases. Um, we also need to track our rankings. Um, you know this uh this sounds basic and maybe it is but we you need to know and, and a lot of people have been hating on you know rank tracking and like oh rank tracking isn't uh it's not accurate um and it's true some tools are not accurate um but a lot of, but tools have gotten better in the last few years and so now we can track desktop we can track mobile we can track all these differences um and so we should be doing that uh tracking technical issues as well and how things are changing over time um here's a shot from deep crawl um you know so you can you can look at the different um the, the different trends as things are being fixed right you can say oh look we had a ton of 404s uh, or a ton of non 200 pages and we you know we killed that by making these uh by making these specific changes and that meant x for our business um and then major site changes um as well a, a lot of people it still amazes me how a lot of people don't annotate their analytics um, this is obviously Google Analytics, and uh, so this is my own site. And when I roll out new changes, um, I'm always I'm annotating it. I have annotations across for the last three years, um, all the way across my site. Every time a major uh, a change is made, whether it's adding content or changing URLs, especially big uh, big updates, um, I make sure to put that in there um, so I can go back and look at it, and then also so that others um, you know who work with me can go back and look at it as well. Um, it can also help us diagnose other business challenges, right? Like what happened in these specific uh, specific areas? Turns out for most of these, it was around um, holidays um, because B2B, um, and this is also mostly US, uh, so US holidays affect us a lot. But you know, when when I look back over the last couple of years, I could say, oh, why was there you know a 10% drop week on week there? It was you know, was it a change that I made or was it a holiday? So let's get into traffic monitoring. Uh, no traffic, no dollars is what I like to say. If you don't have any traffic, you're not going to make any money. Um, and at the end of the day, our job is to drive traffic. Um, but actually, uh, our job is to acquire visitors to our site who become customers. Um, that begins with traffic, but you know we're trying to get uh, qualified traffic is what we're what we're looking for. And then um, th this borders onto what others in the company may be doing. Though if it's your own site, obviously you're the one doing this. But uh, getting them to the site. Getting them into your uh, into your funnel, uh, whether that's a free uh, free trial or a demo or purchasing a product or um, adding something to a cart or, or what have you, um, that then you can kind of target them in other ways, right? SEO is by no means the only marketing channel, but it is one of the better ways, one of the best ways that we still have to drive traffic. Um, so. One of the things that we need to know is um, when traffic drops. So this is setting up one, one of the things that you need to do if you haven't already is I want you to go into Google Analytics and I want you to set up a custom alert. Um, admin custom alerts, it's under view, formerly known as a profile and then alerts. And so set up um, this exact uh, alert where I call it organic traffic minus 20% week on week. Uh, the medium is organic. Um, and then the uh, sessions percentage decreases by more than 20% compared to the previous week. Um, set this up and then also set it up uh, for organic traffic plus 20% week on week. So instead of percent decreases by more than, do percent increases by more than. Uh, so this will help you know if it has, uh, when good things are happening and when bad things are happening. Um, I think in the last five years, I've gotten one of these um, and it was because of a holiday, but it's, it's good to have in place. And I know that if something catastrophic happens, I'm going to get an email about it. Um, and then of course you can, you know, give Google your phone number. Um, so you can receive a text message about it as well. If you, if you want to do that, I actually use Zapier, uh, to send me an email when I get, uh, an email with, um, with, with the subject line. Um, of it dropping. And then also track um, traffic to your specific site section. So um, these are some of my site sections um, on Credo. And so I basically have specific um, 
within a dashboard, I have organic concessions to the major sections of my site. So I can see what's going on. I can see when, you know, uh, when something changed because I changed my internal linking or building links or, um, or what have you. So this is where, um, this is one thing that a lot of people don't do. They just look at overall traffic and you can do this in, you know, other dashboarding tools and that sort of thing. But if you're using Google analytics, you can just build this out straight there within your profile. So, uh, and, and this helps you get, uh, when you roll something out, roll out new pages or something like that, then you can see uh, what the effect was within, um, within that. Um, and then also tracking uh, traffic by platform, desktop versus mobile. Um, it's important to keep in mind that sometimes um, when traffic, uh, when, when new um, mobile versions roll out, sometimes different, uh, different things happen. So for example, a few years ago, iOS 6 rolled out um, and it started attributing uh, most search traffic as direct traffic. And so a lot of people were freaking out saying like, oh my gosh, we lost so much organic traffic. What happened? Actually, when you plotted that against direct traffic, uh, direct traffic spiked. So direct was stealing our organic traffic, at least as far as that reporting was concerned. Um, so keeping this in mind can help you out um, with, with just staying sane. Um, and then rankings monitoring uh, is obviously super important. Um, so we need to be tracking our keyword buckets. Um, and I'm going to explain what that means. But for a long time, we've been the SEO industry has been saying that uh, rank tracking is dead um, and something else is replacing it, probably social media or something like that. Um, who knows, but th this has been being said for a long time. Um, but a pro tip, especially in the SEO world, is when someone says something is dead, it means that it's very much alive and it's being done for a reason. Um, and they're probably trying to tell you, sell you something if they're saying that it's dead. Um, so ring tracking is very much alive. Um, is something that you need to be doing. Um, but notice I said keyword buckets. So as the SEO, it's your job to track the data and interpret it for your boss or for your clients. Um, obviously, we've all had, we've probably all had bosses that say, um, you know, how are we doing for this specific ranking? How's this specific keyword uh, ranking? You know, and sometimes it's not the keyword that means most for your business. Um, sure, track it, talk about it, right? It can be a, you know, a point of pride, but if it's not gonna make a difference in your business, that's not what you should be reporting on. Instead, we need to track um, a, a larger subset of keywords so we can see, okay, these are our category page rankings. These are our blog, uh, our content rankings. Um, so we can see where things are moving. This especially matters on a larger site, like an e-commerce site or a marketplace or something like that, which is pretty much um, what I've worked with for the last five years. Um, so tracking these groups of keywords, your category pages, et cetera, so you can see what's moving around. Um, but SEOs really talk about uh, SEO in terms of money. And so um, th that's what we need to be pointing them back to, right? Not, you know, how well are we ranking for this one keyword that they care about, um, which might not even be possible for you to rank for, um, but we need to be constantly directing them back to that. And by rank tracking and showing where things are moving and where your opportunities are, we can talk about it in terms of money. Um, so use a tool, um, you know, to track your rankings. It's obvious, but, um, and, and people ask me, what, uh, what tools do you use? Um, you know, what tool should I use for, uh, for rank tracking? And basically my answer is the tool that you have access to, um, and, and depending on the type of site that you have. So, uh, this is within, uh, within SEMrush, um, which is a tool that I use. And so basically it's the visibility trend, um, for my site, um, and you know, how I'm ranking for different things, uh, you know, changes, um, you know, uh, daily is really, um, what I get here. And so I, I love this visibility trend because it shows that, okay, this is how well we're increasing, um, Caveat there, the, I don't know if y'all can see my, um, my uh, cursor, but here I added more keywords. So that's something to, to keep in mind and to annotate. Um, but you can see over time, you know, my, my visibility is increasing, which is a good thing. Um, you know, if I was reporting to someone, I could, uh, I could show them this. Um, and then also get weekly email reporting from your tool. Um, SEMrush sends these, uh, Moz sends these, you know, wh whatever you're using, um, get, uh, get the, uh, a weekly email that can tell you, you know, how well are you ranking? You know, did your rankings increase? Did they go down? And how are you doing according to the competitors that you're tracking um, or, you know, other similar sites? Um, and then build up a history of rankings um, to build case to build business cases. So this is another client um, where, as you can see, this rankings graph is all over the place. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before. Um, but then all of a sudden we studied out and what happened was we created a dedicated page. Um, so, you know, you can use this basically to build, put in your portfolio of things that you've done that have worked, um, and use it to build cases for other clients or internally or whatever. This is rank tracking, um, via, uh, via Moz right here. Um, so building up that history is, is super powerful. Um, second, getting into the, into technical issues, um, site issues always slowly grow. 
um, and this is from Moz, and you know it's the it's their uh, weekly um, uh, monitoring. This is an, an email that I get. Um, I believe this is in an email. Uh, or no, this is within the their dashboard. You can see you know the total issues, um, you know, and how some of them are slowly creeping up, others are going down, um, and uh, th this really helps you to stay on track of what's going on um, on your site. It's much better than like the um, you know Google Search Console reporting of 404s and that sort of stuff. Though you know that's another touch point for you. Um, so are you tracking these consistently is my, is my question. Do you know what's changing on your site and know when, you know, when 404 spike or when they go down or, um, you know, when you're having server increased in server errors and that sort of thing, all these things affect SEO. And so you as the SEO should be the first person to know about it. Um, and then keep a list of prioritized fixes. Um, as you're going, um, I like to just do this, you know, um, over time, every week I'll go back and I'll look through and say, okay, like what, you know, what's developed, what, you know, what's gone away based on the things that were being shipped. And basically this is a backlog. Um, this is an SEO backlog, um, you know, that we're grooming consistently. And I like to do it as, you know, what's the issue? Um, where's the task? And then, um, sorry, what resources do you need? And then also effort, right? One to one to five, this is effort to get it done. Um, and this is, and then impact is how much SEO impact do we think it's going to have? Um, and then what's the specific goal? So we can uh, measure towards that. Um, and then get a weekly crawl um, or report with changes. So this is, uh, this is deep crawl again. And so you can see the different, um, you know, things that have changed, what's gone up, what's gone down, you know, what have you solved? Um, and then what's appeared um, on your site, especially important as a, uh, on a site that is constantly um, constantly changing or you know user generated content that sort of thing this is really important to know um, and then I, I talked about the backlog earlier but we have I think SEOs need to think a, a lot more like a product person we need to think strategically um, and in terms of what can make the biggest impact because we're we we're always faced with budget constraints we're always faced with uh, time and people constraints and so we need to ask ourselves what are the changes that we can make um, that take the least effort but have the highest impact. Um, those are the things that we have to do first. And then conversely, especially when client comes to us and they want, you know, quote unquote, quick wins. Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. And so it's up to us to kind of set their expectations. But, you know, if you do discover those and they have, you know, for example, a ton of 404s that have inbound links, that's the highest impact change you can make, right? And so you can do that and you're gonna see that lift and they're gonna keep working with you for the long term. Um, and then conversely, what are the changes that will take more focused effort? So it's a higher amount of effort, but have an outsized return for the business. Um, you know, maybe you're expanding the number of pages you have ranking the, you know, in the long tail, that sort of thing. It's gonna take a bunch of development work and design work and um, and all that sort of thing, but it can it can show a big return um, there. So, um, so basically we're prioritizing um, that way. And then as issues grow, as I mentioned, we're reprioritizing. We're keeping that list. Um, and if you if you have the good fortune to be working with a product manager, uh, especially a good product manager, um, and you're sh you're shipping things out quickly, um, this is mostly in an agile development um, world. Then um, you can basically have things queued up, ready to go. You know, for the following sprints. Um, in waterfall mode, you're going to have to do a lot more planning and and get everything um, done before it can really be rolled out. Um, waterfall development is basically pushing out a, a huge update. Um, you know, every few months as opposed to Agile. Um, sometimes they're deploying daily and, and bigger releases going out every couple of weeks. Um, so we can reprioritize as we know about this and monitoring um, lets us keep on track of the most important things because those, those might change. And then finally, uh, SEO monitoring lets us be prepared for executives um, and to answer their questions. They love asking this question. I've gotten this question so many times. I can't even tell you how many. Um, what is the thing that we could do that would show the biggest growth for our site, for our business? Uh, from an SEO perspective, and a lot of us sit back. I've done this. I've sat back. I'm like, um, uh, we need links. Um, that's not that's not the thing that you can get that will often you know show the biggest growth. Um, and so you need to have this answer um, prepared. Um, and so my question for you is, do you have an answer for this for your site? Um, most of us don't. But if we've been monitoring, then we'll have the answer. Um, I know, for example, I know that on my site, I, if I speed it up, um, then it's um, I'm going to get better rankings. That's the highest leverage thing that I can do. Um, so do you know that for your for your own website? Um, so answers like this, um, you know, well, I've been tracking our site for the last six months. We've been seeing an increase in errors on our site, but I haven't had the people to get them fixed. If I had two developers for two weeks, I could knock them out, engage that we would see a lift of, you know, insert percentage here um, of organic sales. That makes it super easy for them to go like, oh, that makes sense. Why haven't you had developers? Okay, great. Let's see where we can get those for you. And you're actually going to get that buy-in. So let's talk about tools um, real quick. Uh, the tools you need for monitoring are, um, it's pretty straightforward, um, a keyword tool, a, a keyword tracker, um, 
a crawling tool, um, at least one that you can automate as well. Um, Google Analytics, um, and then you can use, uh, there are a bunch of smaller tools out there for monitoring things like Google Search Console, something like Little Warden or Sanity Check. Um, Little Warden's out of the UK, Sanity Check's out of the US. Um, I've used them both, they're both great. Um, so rank tracking tools, um, which one do you use? Once again, the best one to use is the one that you have access to, the one that you subscribe to. And if you su subscribe to all of them, track your keywords in all of them, because you can start seeing you know, disparities and actually see which ones are more, uh, more accurate for your specific business. Um, within Moz, pro within the pro campaign, um, SEMrush, um, you know, their keyword tracking is quite good within their projects, and then also their keyword database um, and updates daily. Um, and then if you're enterprise and can afford to price per keyword um, and need that super deep insight, then Stat um, is a great tool to use there as well. And I've used that on many clients, um, and it's a, it's a fantastic tool. And they're a great team up there in Vancouver, Canada. Um, On-demand crawling tools, uh, Screaming Frog um, is the is the go-to um, still based around the UK. I love Screaming Frog, um, and basically I think every SEO should have a license to this. Um, and it's great for you know on-demand crawling, um, and it, it can also you know scale. Um, I've learned in the last couple of months can scale quite well to bigger sites as well. Um, so you can get you know crawls of your uh, crawls of your site and really start. It's, it gives you a ton of data that you can then parse through. Um, Moz, if you have a pro subscription, you can also do on-demand crawls. Um, and then if you have SEM rush and you set up a new project, they'll do a crawl right then and you can also kick them off when you want. Um, and then automated crawling tools, of course, I have to talk about deep crawl. Um, deep crawl is my tool of choice here. Um, it's you know the, the focus tool uh, within your campaigns, uh, set it up to um, every week. Uh, let me see, I think I actually have it on the next one. So you can, uh, you can run the crawl weekly. You can choose when you wanna have it. Um, when you have want to have it run and then you can always then you can get sent alerts and compare it with the last crawl because that's really what we're looking for here is we're looking for what's changed over time so that then we can put it into action. Um, so let's talk about a couple of popular use cases for um, for SEO monitoring that you can take. Um, hopefully I've given you some uh, specific things that you can go that you're not currently doing that you can go and do but here are some use cases that I found um, for monitoring. So uh, first of all we're not ranking for our brand name. If you get that frantic call, um, like I did a couple times, um, we if you if you don't have these changes in place, if you don't have these uh, annotations and and keyword tracking and um, and all that in place, then you're not really going to be able to to answer um, these questions. So things like, did we roll out any major changes in the last few days? You can find that from Google Analytics annotations. If you're in house, check Jira or wherever um, you're doing that. You know, was there a push at all? Did did something new get rolled out? Did something change with the servers? Um, do keyword tools show the same? Um, you know, I've I've seen uh, websites where uh, they the traffic drops and but rankings haven't changed. And then we go and we look and um, and Google has added something up top and so push the organic results further down the page. So people are like, you know, oh we got a penalty or oh we lost rankings. No, actually uh, Google just changed the basically the click through rate curve for your industry. Um, and you know there's not much we can do about that. Um, and so uh, but but if they uh, if rankings have changed and we can know, okay, they did change and how long has this been the case? And then things like is organic traffic down to the home page, et cetera, right? Brand name, brand term. Um, if so, you know, when did this happen and what happened around there? Um, leads dropped, okay, so from which channels, right? Uh, go back to your GA dashboard. Um, and then, you know, were they specific pages or sections that lost traffic, once again, with your dashboard? Um, okay, so if it was SEO, then what happened? Was it an algorithm change, right? So check the other industry sites, check the SERP trackers, there's so many out there these days. Um, that uh, and of course Barry at Search Engine Roundtable always rounds them up when something might be happening. You know, manual penalty. Um, you know, looking for alerts for traffic being down or Google Search Console emails. Um, though that's obviously uh, is the exception, not the rule. That manual penalty is what will cause it. Um, so and then of course we're, I've talked about tracking our own site, but let's, when if, when you want to go to the next level, don't just do it for your site. Don't just set up your site. Um, actually, I would say that, uh, go and uh, track your competitors as well. Set up a project for your competitors within SEMrush or within DeepCrawl um, and crawl them and see how things are changing. Um, you want to, if sometimes when traffic drops, then it's because a competitor is overtaking you. And so you want to know what did they do? Did they fix a ton of 404s? Did they add new pages? Um, did they speed up their site? There are a lot of uh, different things that can happen there. So if you're tracking your competitors, then you have a good understanding of what's going on um, within your industry um, broadly. So as you can hear, my voice is getting a little bit of raspy. So um, I am done. Thank you for, uh, for tuning in and for watching. Um, I appreciate you taking the time. 
to be here with us. Uh, once again, I'm John Doherty. You can connect with me online um, on Twitter. I've been off it for the month, but I'm getting back on September 1st um, on Instagram. My personal site and Credo are both there. Um, and uh, there's me and Butterbean smiling at you. So I would love to take your questions. Fantastic, John. Thank you very much. And uh, as I say, your voice doesn't get off yet. We have uh, the question part of the whole process, which uh, thank you for the fantastic presentation. Um, lots of very, very useful information in there. And um, it's great to see as you've been carrying on through the uh, through the, the slide presentation, the, the attendance has gone up and up and up, which is which is always great to see. So a big thank you to our attendees on the in the afternoon in the UK and uh, wherever you are, might be in the world today. So uh, it's great to have you with us. So jumping into some questions, John, I mean, you've, you've talked about a huge amount of tools. You've talked about many you know, different scenarios of, of tracking and monitoring and stuff like that. So I, I, there's probably a few ones I just want to grill into. And you, you've talked about rank trackers. You mentioned, you know, use the rank tracker, which, um, you know, you have access to, um, was I think how you put it, which is, is always obviously the way to look at it. Which one do you feel, though, is probably the most accurate rank tracking tool out there on the marketplace? Oh man, that's a great that's a great question. I mean, sorry to throw that one in. That, that came from the yeah. audience. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say uh, basically the the I'm going to be a politician here and basically say like the your rank tracker should have um, it should be tracking desktop rankings. It should be tracking um, mobile rankings. It should also be tracking uh, different search result features like featured snippets and ads above and below the fold. Um, you know, uh, related questions. People also and uh, people also ask boxes. Um, that sort of thing. So um, the two that I've been using that I use really um, are SEM Rush because they give you that uh, that insight um, within the specific keyword. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that search result look like? Um, yep. And then on a enterprise level, stat. Stat. Okay. Good choices. Yes, yes, stat. Good products. Yep. Which is uh, you know I, I, I agree with you on, on both of those products, um, which are great to have. Um, one quick question, which has just come from uh, Shizz Azar, is can you explain the keyword buckets again quickly, please? Yeah, for sure. So um, basically what I do here is, so for example, on my site, um, I have uh, I have category pages, I have blog pages, I have resource pages, that sort of thing. Um, and on a lot of, you know, e-commerce sites and, and that sort, um, you know, you have a lot of categories and subcategories um, and all that. So for example, if you have a, you know, an e-commerce site and um, you have, you know, you're selling a bunch of different types of uh of clothing right you might have a, a pants or trousers uh, section as you'd say in the uk um and so you know maybe you have like black trousers blue trousers that sort of thing um basically that all of those trousers keywords i would uh, say is a bucket um and so when you put that into your rank tracker um then labeling that as you know trousers um and sometimes and i like to do a lot of like um, a lot of tagging within here so i'll tag it as mm -hmm. trousers as um as category, uh, you know, if they're longer tail, subcategory, um, that sort of thing. So then I can just click yeah. on that one and say, okay, how have our trousers keywords done over the last six months? No, it makes a lot of sense. And it's great to hear you, you know, talking about it in that way as well. Cause I mean, for the, you know, not just SEO from the PPC side of things as well, you're actually thinking a bit like how, how a PPC guy would kind of tag the whole thing up and, and categorize and it, it absolutely works in SEO. I mean, I've seen that myself. So it's a great way to think about that whole process and how you tag that and obviously how you monitor that as well, which is which is wonderful. Um, loads more questions coming in around tools. When I dive specifically into a couple around um, some numbers, uh, Kyle Faber, you know, just like your suggestion on how you go about monitoring uh, changes at scale, you know, say like 100,000 pages. Um, would all of these tools kind of, you know, deal with that sort of level of um, scale or it, would you kind of recommend a different way of looking at scale in some respects? Uh, no, these absolutely these absolutely scale well. I mean, most of the sites that I work on have uh, multiple six figures of pages um, in the index, and so um, yeah, you know, it's it's it, no one tool is going to do everything for you. But as long as you have, you know, you're tracking, um, you know, enough keywords to have a good idea of uh, how things are moving around, um, and then you have a crawler, you know, that can scale to that. I think SEM Rush theirs is uh, within their projects. Their uh, default is. Their max is 20,000, but you can also have a custom number as well. Um, obviously, within Deep Crawl, it's you know your uh, um, uh, what your subscription level um, allows you, so you can crawl, you know, that many pages. Um, I will mm -hmm. also say that you don't always have to have a full crawl in order to know what's going on. 
Um, so, you know, it helps when you're starting off to get a full crawl, but then, you know, you, if you crawl the top 20,000 pages or something like that weekly, um, that lets you know um, what's going on there. Um, and, and there are also some ways, I know uh, Aleda Solis um, in Spain just wrote a post recently about using Google Data Studio um, to pull in a lot of data as well. And so, you, you know, basically having that overall dashboard um, of, you know, issues and changes as well. I don't know if you can grab a lot of, you know, these technical issues from, um, you know, APIs and stuff to build your own mm -hmm. um, dashboard if you, um, you know, if, if you have those skills or you have a team that can do it, an analytics team or something like that. Um, but th those are some ways to do it as well to get it into one, um, one place. Yep, absolutely. It makes a lot of sense as well. I think you, you've started something with mentioning all these tools. I've got like so many questions of people have, asking, why haven't you mentioned this tool? Why haven't you mentioned that oh, tool? No. So, I know, yeah. So <laughs> you're going to put it in the box here. <laughs> um, and I'm going to kind of come to the position where uh, I'm going to basically there's uh, Les Faber, um, Nikita, and Jason McGovern have asked the questions around certain tools and they said, you know, uh, why not use uh, Google Search Console for tracking rankings? Why haven't you mentioned full hrefs and, and in particular as well uh, google data studio from a, a monitoring point of view yep yeah yeah i mean hrefs is a is a fantastic tool as well um i subscribe there too and i actually use them um a lot for like you know when i'm working on like a big subdom a sub subdomain of a big site um you know that sort of thing so um yeah they're they're fantastic um as well um and it's uh you know th these are just I, I basically talked about the tools that I tend to use the most, um, yeah. or that, that I do uh -huh. use the most, um, you know, and, and by no means meaning to, you know, leave other people um, out. I will say, though, that there are, you know, tools are a dime a dozen in the SEO industry, um, and, you know, and they're good, and people build them, you know, for specific purposes. Um, I've just found that, you know, you could you could spend your whole, you know, your nine to five every single day testing new tools. Um, and so, really, find, you know, f find the tool that works, you know, that works for you. Um, you know, and, and sometimes you do need that, you know, more, uh, more specific tool, you know, to do one specific thing. But, um, you know, if you, if you just, you know, you don't have a ton of budget and you can only get, you know, one or two subscriptions, um, you know, basically I, I try to help people cut through the, the noise and really get to the signal and, you know, what they should be using. So, um, that's, uh, that's why I no, recommend those specific I, I couldn't ones. agree more with you, mate. In a lot of respects, it, you're right. There is so many tools out there on the marketplace. And I think it's just, it's, it's finding the suite of tools that suit you. Um, and in some time, respect it sometimes using the specialist ones to do the specialist job rather than buying the enterprise ones that kind of do a bit of a bit of all of them. So it's 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 an endless list of tools. Um, and we've been asked more about more tools kind of thing. I think if, I think <laughs> you could virtually write a blog post yourself on you know, John's recommendation on tool sets. Um, yes, yeah, seriously. Coming in. <laughs> so just, just shifting gear actually on that question a little bit. It's a great question by Ben Lightplay. Um, who, who first of all says thank you very much for the information uh, to yourself, John, which is fun. You know. Uh, thanks thanks for the comment ben um but when it comes to the tools how much percentage of your budget you know max maximum wise would you spend on tools because as you say it's kind of endless in some respects yeah. yeah it is and hey ben thanks for the thanks for the question i appreciate it a lot um I, I don't know that I can give a percentage because I don't know what your budget is. Um, you know, I, I think it's reasonable to say that you can, you know, I, I personally, I'll tell you what I personally spend. I, I have an SEMR subscription, uh, Ahrefs subscription, uh, you know, uh, Screaming Frog license. I mean, I have, I probably spend $500 a month on SEO tools. Um, you know, and that's low, right? I'm not like a big enterprise yeah. brand. I know, you know, big enterprise brands spend multiple thousands of dollars a month on, um, you know, uh, across various tools and crawlers and, and all of that. So, um, you know, I've, I've honestly seen some brands that are in the five figures per month for tools um, because they wow. have that big of a site and they need it, um, right? But that's the exception, not the rule. So, um, you know, most people subscribe to multiple. Uh, if you're at an agency, you probably have access to a lot of them. Um, mm. So, but I mean, I would say, you know, in the, uh, you know, at least, you know, a hundred bucks a month, um, you're going to have some annual subscriptions and, you know, and that sort of thing. So, um, but it, you know, but, but one other thing I will say is like, definitely, you know, try out new tools, new tool comes on the market or, you know, you're trying to solve a specific, uh, problem and, um, that's, uh, that's fine. Um, you know, so try out a new tool. Um, but, uh, also keep an eye on, you know, what you're spending on. If you haven't used it in three months, then, you know, mm -hmm. stop the subscription. Um, it's basically no, what I would a really, say. It's a really great point, John. And I think it's also, it's great that most of these tools actually in the marketplace today as well kind of offer a try before you buy in some respects. You can, you can get a free trial from a lot of these tools that we're talking about today. 
so try them and yep, if you don't like them and they don't do the don't do the job for you then you know move on to the next one because as you say there's there's a good 40 50 60 tools out there in the marketplace for all things that we do in the world of seo um so let's talk a little bit about reporting i mean it was one question which i was going to have when you were talking towards yeah. the end around monitoring but um justin justin hamilton's coming and asked the same sort of thing he's you know you said that ceo understands the dollars uh, when it comes to seos um so assigning dollar values for conversions is, is a lot easier in certain industries such as you know e-commerce in some, in some ways what would you recommend for in you know industries like healthcare you know or cpg or what we call fmcg here in, in europe you know things that have more soft metrics rather than hard ROI metrics kind of thing because it's it's giving that data to the CEO or the CMO to to understand it in the way that their mind thinks rather than how an SEO thinks. Do you have any recommendations around that? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. And I mean, your reporting is going to change based off of the specific industry that you're in. Um, you know, if you're in B two B, you're going to be talking about leads, right, and and cost per lead. Um, and then of course you have to define what a lead is, right? Is it an email address? Is it like, you know, a project? Is it a marketing qualified lead? Is it a sales qualified lead within e-commerce? You're gonna have product, um, you know, you, you can set up e-commerce tracking um, within, you know, Google Analytics or, you know, there are a lot of places that you can do that. Um, a lot of the different e-commerce platforms, you know, also allow you to do some level of reporting um, there as uh, as well. So, um, you know, really it, it depends on your specific industry, um, you know, and, and those kind of leading metrics that you can point to. If you're doing lead gen, um, you know, you can talk about a, you know, a specific cost, um, you know, cost per lead. I don't actually like using that because, you know, what's a lead worth? Is it, you know, is a lead that's worth $100 or a lead that could be worth $5,000 a month, right? You're going to pay different amounts, you know, for those. And if you're trying to get, you know, a $5,000 a month project, uh, you know, trying to generate that for $50, like that's not really going to work. You can afford to spend mm -hmm. a few thousand dollars to get that lead. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it really, you know, depends on the specific, um, specific industry. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of people out there that are better at analytics, you know, and, and this sort of like uh, tracking, um, you know, conversion tracking than I am, right? People like Annie Cushing and uh, my friend Tyler Lane here in Denver. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, th there are a lot of other, you know, resources out there, but I mean, it's it's a great point. And actually part of the reason why I didn't cover reporting um, is simply because there are so many different types of businesses out there um, and what your, you know, specific, uh, you know, client or exec wants you to report on um, is going to change depending on the business. Yeah, no, absolutely, and great points as well. And just but, a question, I just but go, that said, go like, I think we should go, be sir. there as well. So, Agreed. you know, having having uh, reports and that sort of stuff set up, like I know exactly how many how many form submits I'm getting from specific types of pages on my site. I have all of that data, right? I'm tracking it. Um, but you know, it, but then tying it back to direct revenue and all that is uh, can be a lot tougher in different industries. Sorry to interrupt you there. No, no, Jolly, absolutely right. Add to it. It's, uh, this is your webinar, sir. I'm just here to, to, to go through the Q&A stuff with you. Um, just, I mean, a, a, an interesting little question, just shifting back completely in the other direction from large scale and CEOs to CMOs and David Sorensen. He just said, any suggestions on monitoring many small sites, you know, like 20 plus with scale? Um, so like a, a small shop that has 50 clients, wants to set up processes to monitor. Uh, and also he says, thanks very much for a great session. Um, you know, looking at it the other way around as well, you know, small, small sites at, at scale kind of thing. So rather than large, you know, a few big, large sites, many, many, many small sites with the, with the same process, and the same tools, you know, go through, um, go through the same uh, mix for you um, in your head, John. Yeah, totally. It's a, it's a great question. Um, and I mean, I, I'll point out that pretty much all the, the tools I've talked about here allow you to do multiple, um, multiple accounts or multiple campaigns. Um, you know, I'm, I'm tracking multiple sites and, you know, in Moz and SEM rush, et cetera. And so you can set those, um, you know, you, so if you have 50 clients, um, you know, you get a new client and you add them in to your, you know, whatever the tools that you're using, you set up a new campaign in Moz or a new project in SEM rush, excuse me. Um, so, but I think what's more important is actually having the defined process for what you're tracking. Um, and so this is much easier if you're, you know, working in a specific niche and saying you're just doing like lead gen for lawyers, right? So like, you know, the kinds of keywords you're going to need to track, you're going to have the tools that, you know, work best for tracking, you know, local results and, um, and that sort of thing. So basically what I would say is um, what's more important than um, like all, all these tools can scale there, right? You're going to have to pay more money if you're, mm -hmm. you know, tracking 50 sites as opposed to tracking five sites. Um, so, you know, you have to keep that in, uh, in mind as well and you know maybe build that into your um into your retainers um but 
what I would say is actually having the checklist of, you know, do we have keyword tracking in place? Have we set up a crawl? Um, you know, have we, uh, are we brand monitoring? Like all of these different things, um, which I didn't even mention brand monitoring, right? But that's another one, um, you know, cause that can help you out with link building, um, reclaiming those, uh, reclaiming those brand mentions as links. Um, have I would say actually sit down and look at look across your clients and say okay like you know what do they have in common and so what what's basically a process and a checklist that we can build out that okay when we bring on a new client what's our onboarding mm -hmm. process have we set them up in you know in Moz have we you know kicked off a crawl in Dcrawl right that that sort of thing and then and go down the list um, and make sure you have that set up for each one as you bring them on so it, it, this can absolutely scale um, no, fantastic and I think you might get a ton of emails. But yeah, uh, you, you might well do so. And it's uh, I think what's interesting, you just talked about going down the list and, and ticking boxes and going off. There's a, a question just coming from uh, Ashley uh, Portillo, who's saying, what is your best recommendation? You know, putting on your, your teaching hat in some respects. Uh, what is your best recommendation for someone starting out with minimal knowledge in SEO? What source is best for teaching how to fix these errors or crawl errors or, or the monitoring side of things? And again, Ashley says, thank you for your presentation and your help. Um, would you recommend a resource or a source? I mean, it might be yourself <laughs> kind of thing, but uh, is, yeah. you know, where's best to go I mean, to kind of get, get your head around this, apart from obviously the, the fantastic deck that you've just presented, which everybody can have tomorrow. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, and, and basically here I talked about keeping on track of all the issues that are going on um, and didn't talk about uh, tracking, um, didn't talk about actually fixing them. And the, the fix is going to, it's going to depend on the issue. It's going to depend on the kind of site that you are. It's going to depend on um, also, you know, what team you have in place or if you have a team in place or if you have to find, you know, a developer, something like that to, you know, to get it done. Um, so, I mean, if you're just starting off in SEO, a beginner's guide to SEO uh, on Moz is still the best resource um, out there. Um, Distilled You, um, the old agent, the agency I used to work for uh, based in London, um, London, New York, and Seattle, um, they still have Distilled You, which is uh, basically mm -hmm. the training platform that they put their own SEOs through. Uh, I helped to build that out a few years ago. It's still a great resource um, there. So that can teach you a lot. And they have like interactive quizzes and that sort of thing on like, you know, robots.txt and canonicalization and, and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, that's where that's where I would start. Um, and then I actually just did an Instagram uh, Instagram TV video about this yesterday, which I can't believe I just said that, but I did um, <laughs> basically talk about like how you get started within SEO. Basically, it's like read those resources, um, you know, follow these specific sites, search engine land, search engine journal. Moz has some fantastic stuff there, like both going out now and in the archives. Um, and then following specific people on Twitter, right? Start with like Rand and, and uh, Rand Fishkin and Danny Sullivan and, um, you know, people like that. And then, you know, follow the people that they're, you know, retweeting and interacting with. Um, that's honestly been the, the best way for me to, that, that's still where I get that information. Um, yeah. uh, I've learned a lot through that. No, fantastic. Agreed. And uh, for everybody that's on the webinar today, obviously follow uh, Doherty JF on Twitter or Doherty JF on Instagram if you want to see the man himself on TV on Instagram, which is, as you said, I never thought you'd actually ever say that. I've not said that myself yet. But um, I John, I, I, was, <laughs> a big, a big thank you, sir. For uh, I mean, we're out of time. We're, we've come to five o'clock, and obviously in the UK, the day is the day is finishing out. So obviously, I want to get everybody back to finishing up their desks and um, and getting off. And obviously, you, you're just starting your day, John. But uh, a massive thank you to everybody who's attended uh, the webinar. Obviously, a massive thank you to yourself, John, for um, taking the time out to come and do the presentation for us. Um, we've had an incredible amount of questions again, which is always nice to see on a deep call webinar. So what we will probably do is uh, put John under pressure, um, send him the questions, and see if he can answer them all very quickly for us so we can get those into, into one of our wrap-ups as well. Um, if you have a look in the chat box as well now, you'll find a guide to... Um, an integration that we've just done with Zapier at Deepcrawl, uh, which ties in nicely from a monitoring point of view. And John mentioned Zapier as a tool of choice at the start of uh, his presentation. Um, well worth a check out. It's, it's there and available via Deepcrawl, so you can actually start to monitor a lot of your SEO problems via the Zapier platform, which I know is one of the best out there in the marketplace. As I say, we love your feedback. There will be a survey as you guys log out of the webinar tonight. And uh, thank you for all you guys that have found on for the extra minute. Please do take the time to fill in the survey. It's incredibly quickly to do. And um, it just gives us that feedback on what we can do to improve or, or if you, can't, you don't think we can improve, we'd love to hear that you think that as well. Uh, recap will be out tomorrow, as I say. There'll be the, the recording. There'll be out an email to everybody that's subscribed. And obviously, the blog post will go out as well. And we'll get those Q&As answered as well, which we didn't get time to answer on the webinar tonight. Or just to say the webinar... Um, is next up is on the 19th of September with uh, Aleda Salisu, John did mention as well. 
on expanding international SEO. She's one of the best out there in the world of international SEO, and it'll be her second time around to come and have a conversation with my good self on a deep crawl webinar. So, so please take the time to register via the link again. That's in the chat box or watch out for our emails for uh, September the 19th as well. So again, Mr. Master, thank you for listening, guys. A huge thank you to Mr. John Doherty, founder and CEO of Credo, for taking the time to, to put this presentation together and give you guys some incredibly actionable ways to monitor your SEO going forward. So thank you, John, and uh, you know, thanks for being with us, sir. Thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure. This has been fun. Thank you, sir. And uh, a big thank you to you all again. And uh, my name is John Myers. This was a uh, deep crawl SEO monitoring. And I, I look forward to having many of you back for the next one, as I said, on the 19th of September. Thank you.